Hey, what's up? It's always me, Johnny, and today we are here again with the MacBook Pro. And as you read already by the title, this will be a video only on the touch bar of this MacBook Pro. So this one, as you may already know, it is the 13 version of the 2020. So this is the M1 version, but these tips are gonna be also valid for the older model of the MacBook Pro with the touch bar, of course. So let's start with some basics and let's see how to rearrange your touch bar because for example, here by default, we have the Siri button and I don't love it too much because you end up clicking that button very often. And so I've decided to remove it. And so you just go in the system preferences of your Mac and then you will click on keyboard and then you will find uh, the customize control strip right here. And then this menu will appear right here. And so with that, you can just drag and drop all this icon into your touch bar. For example, I can just drag and drop this spotlight you can see right here. And I just dragged on my touch bar. And so if I let go my mouse, the item will be in your touch bar. Also, if you have your cursor right here, your mouse right here, so you just go down and you will see that you can select also the icons already in the touch bar. So for example, this is the Siri button. I can drag it right here and remove it from the touch bar because that's the first thing that <laughs> you're gonna do. And then you can customize as you want uh, your touch bar. For example, the first thing that I always do on this MacBook Pro, it is to drag the screenshot uh, function right here into the touch bar because it is uh, too useful for me. I use it pretty much any time. And so you can do screenshots and also you can do screen recording as you can see right now that it is a uh, screen recording. Then another basic function that you can do, it is slide to control the basic settings we can say and so the audio and brightness of your laptop because you can also click on the volume button for example and just uh, tap it to increase or decrease or maybe slide it right here but you can also hold on the icon and just slide it right on so this is much more faster to lower down the volume for example or just increase it and also it works of course with the brightness uh, button too it is much faster of course then another feature that probably most of you already know that it is of course essential if you use function keys because as you can see we don't have function keys because we have the touch bar of course but if you hold the fn button that it is the emoji button on the new macbooks and if you hold it, you can see that you have your function keys. And so you have it right there. So if you need one of those function keys, remember to hold the FN button. I personally don't use them too much, so I never use this function, of course. Then if you go into the app that you can install on the touch bar, there are a lot of apps that you can get on your touch bar. And the first app that I'm going to mention right here, it is POC. It is an advanced editor of your touch bar. As you can see, it is pretty similar to the standard one to the standard one of the Mac OS and what it can do it is to get these controls into your touch bar for example uh, the dock so you can just replicate your dock in the touch bar so you can just keep your dock hide in the home screen for example so in the desktop so you will have like more uh, screen estate for example because you have the dock right here and also you can see some weather data right here you can see I can just drag and drop the items into your touch bar and also the control center that we have already, some music playing, some status of your laptop. I can just always drag and drop the status. And also there is an ask button keys that we already have on this model, so we don't need that. Then you hit done and then you have all the functions right here. So you can see the Wi-Fi, the battery, you have the weather that I am not in Amsterdam, but but I think this was the default city for the weather app. So of course you can change it and you can just edit also other settings right here, as you can see. So you have a lot of customization in this app. And of course, 
this is all free. Then another app instead of POC that I actually use because I don't really use POC. Uh, it has a lot of feature, but I don't need pretty much any of those. And instead of that, I use an app called App Switcher. You can see it by the icon right there. So this little app icon on the touch bar, you just click it and you have all your apps open right now and you can switch between the apps by tapping them. It is very useful if you are working between some apps and you have to switch like very fast between those and without maybe using your trackpad, maybe you are just writing on your keyboard and you just, while you're typing, you just click another app to switch. So it's very fast, it's very intuitive. It is pretty much useful for me and also this one, it is free. So if you wanna try it, I just recommend this app. Then the last app that I want to suggest it is called Optic Touch Bar and I mean the name is pretty intuitive. <laughs> you can just understand what it does from the name and it actually activates some haptics feedback on the touch bar. So when you will click any of the buttons on the touch bar, it will give you some haptic feedback like the trackpad. So you will feel the same uh, vibration on the touch bar and it is a very, very uh, interesting thing. Of course, you will probably maybe drain some more batteries if you have this function uh, enabled, but uh, you can just download this app and try it by yourself. This is a paid one, but there is a trial, so you can try it for like uh, 14 days, if I'm not wrong. So when you will click any of the button right here, I will try with the FN buttons, you can hear a sound and also a feedback. It is, as I said before, a lot like the trackpad right here, so you cannot hear it very well, but it is a good feedback. So just for fun, try it and let me know down below in the comments if you liked it. Then if you want the touch bar to be just not a useful thing, but just a thing to entertain yourself, we have also some games. And first of all, we have this touch bar pet that it is pretty much like Tamagotchi. I don't know if you are familiar with that, but it is pretty much that. So you have always this pet on the touch bar and it is a cat. You cannot change it. The only thing that it does, it just hit. You can just play it with it, with the laser trigger. You can just give him some food and he just poop. <laughs> you just clean it and some very, very basic stuff, but you can just continue to work. And if I, for example, open a folder or an app, you will always see that pet right there. It doesn't hide automatically, so it does just basic stuff, but it is pretty fun to have it on the touch bar. And also it does grow, so you have like different stages of his uh, life and it is pretty interesting. So also free too. If you wanna try it, just give it a try. Another game to install to your touch bar, it's always about some pets. And with this one, you can choose between like uh, three or four pets. I just can't remember now. I think there are just uh, dogs, cats, hamsters and bunnies, I think. So you will see your pet right here. It's a little different graphic and design. You can just walk your, do your dog. You can just buy stuff for your dog. You can play with it and you can do, you can find like a gift while you're walking your, your dog and stuff like that. Also, you will see the health of the dog. You will see the hunger and stuff like that. You can also build your own designs in this uh, world right here. So you can buy just houses to put in the background, some trees and stuff like that. This one, as I said before, it's very similar, but when you just open another app and this one goes in, in the background, it will not be shown on the touch bar. So you cannot play with it. You can see, I just click on the desktop and you will, and you cannot see it anymore on the touch bar. So this is a little negative if you want to just play with it while you're doing some other stuff. Then for this video on the touch bar, I think that is pretty much it. These are all the function and application that I use for my touch bar right now. So if I have some more to add, I will do uh, another video maybe in the future if this one was somewhat useful to you and remember to leave a like down below because it's free and also subscribe to this channel because I mean it's free too. 
so don't forget to do it right now if you haven't done yet of course and i think i will see you in my next video bye for now Bye.